Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the sauce. This is their part number 208 US3 is what this is. The 208 is one of their uh, concealed hinges and is part of a family of uh, concealed hinges. And the 208 is different than its other part numbers in size uh, is really how these run. This is what a 208 looks like. This is in the US3 finish, that's polished brass. Nice and attractive looking hinge. Um, a really great elegant means to hang a door with very, with, with just, with, with, with one limitation. Um, that you have to observe when it comes to sauce hinges. Otherwise, they're really great. Uh, this is going to be something that you're going to be able to use to hang a door and to make that door a completely concealed sort of look. You won't see any of the hanging hardware. Other hallmarks of sauce, other than the fact that they're concealed, is that they can handle a heavier uh, weight uh, when it comes to the door itself. And that makes it very elegant. Um, by means of these stacked laminated plates that are here available in lots of different finishes. Clearly, again, US3 uh, is, is what we're showing here. Now, a lot of folks will, some people love sauce. Some people order it and, hey, why are you, you know, I'll ask, why are you ordering sauce? Oh, I've been using that hinge forever. It's a great hinge. Other people will order a different type of concealed hinge and I say, why don't you consider sauce? Oh. I don't like the fact that sauce hinges are not adjustable um, after you get them installed. And sauce has said that they will never manufacture, in fact, an adjustable hinge. Um, and I agree with that statement in the sense that there's no reason to uh, manufacture a hinge, provided that you can mortise the hinge where the template calls out for you to mortise it to. There's no reason to adjust it ever at all, period. Um, Door manufacturers, you know, they're going to be able to have the skill set to do these uh, most well. There are some people in the door business that um, won't do it because they, they're not confident in their ability to machine for it accurately. Same thing with people in the field. They don't feel like they have the capability of mortising it correctly. It's not really a, a difficult hinge at all to prep, uh, and we're going to break down the preparation for it. You know, there's one cardinal rule with sauce that you must observe, and that's what's called the E-dimension, and you can't exceed that, um, which is basically the face of the door or frame to where the prep starts. If you make that depth of that hinge too deep, the door is not going to operate because you've got too much material there that it has to swing out and around. It just won't open very far at all. Um, and as long as you observe that, mortising these is really a simple procedure and very much well worth the benefit of it being a concealed hinge. There's one other uh, concern that you would need to be aware of when you are mixing this type of concealed hinge with a overhead concealed stop. You have to template the door correctly for this type of hardware. Um, meaning that when you order your overhead stops, you must indicate to the factory at the time of order uh, what your hanging hardware is so that they can produce a special template if necessary or at least instructions. What I was demonstrating there was how the vertical axis of pivoting on this hinge is different than a butt hinge in the sense that in a butt hinge that vertical axis of pivoting is quite stationary. Well that's not the same with a sauce hinge that that moves through the opening where that vertical axis of pivoting is from closed to open is in a very different location. Okay, So you have to account for that when you're installing other hardware that's dependent on that vertical axis of pivoting. So be sure to call that out when you're ordering your overhead stops and prepare for the fact that it will likely cost a bit more uh, if the factory has to produce a special template. So your E-dimension you can't violate. You have to declare it if you're using it with uh, hardware that's dependent on that vertical axis of pivoting like an overhead stop. Why would you use an overhead stop? Well, if you're doing this small, this type of small hinge, I don't know where it's going. 
But if you had a, 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 a commercial or a residential project and you've got sauce hinges, you know, if you're concealing that, you might want overhead concealed door stops as well, rather than baseboard, floor mount, wall mount stops. Um, you might want to conceal as much hardware as possible. And an overhead concealed stop would allow you to do that. It's going to include screws. These screws look awfully interesting. It's a wood screw. Okay. Yeah, they're steel based. Which is not a bad thing in the sense that it's a screw that's going to have a tougher base material so that you're not unintentionally stripping the material out. Let's take a couple of basic dimensional properties and then we're going to move to the, um, ex the supporting documentation. Overall height of this hinge looks like it's about two and three quarter. Overall width of the face of the hinge looks like it's about five eighths. Overall depth of the body itself is about seven eighths and then the plate looks like it's closer to about a quarter inch. <clears throat> Now, let's switch to the screen view. Let's dive into all the supporting documentation. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the hinge that we are looking at. The SOS 208 in a US-3 invisible hinge. Extended description information is down below. Before we get to that, let's take a look at the photographs. That's the label. I know that these are made in Singapore, and I know the engineering department and sauce is located in Indiana, I believe. Here's your box, your contents. That's your hinge with your screws. You can see those laminated plates that are there. Closed. Uh, 90 degree open. That's 180 degree open. Little side view showing the back side of the body and then your screws. I'm going to refer to, um, I'm going to use two different terms. Plate is just this. That's the plate prep. This would be the body prep. Okay, body and plate. Okay, let's take a look at the extended description. Sauce invisible hinge used in wood or metal applications for doors that are one inch to inch and an eighth thick. The 208 is made of zinc and steel. Nylon links provide strength and durability. What they're saying there is that the body is made of zinc. These laminated plates are steel, but then you've got this nylon inside of there. That's gonna allow it to operate smoothly. Mid-range door hinge will provide superior appearance and durability. Um, I'm thinking mid-range in the sense of the door thickness, the door weight that it can handle. Sauce hinges are found in many applications where a flush fit, compact size, and smooth operation are necessary requirements. You can get to 180 degrees, provided that you've installed it, templated it, correctly and there are no other you know conditions uh, that would limit that bright brass number eight screws yeah I would say that those are number eight eight by inch and a quarter they're giving you a soft wood pilot hole and a hardwood pilot hole these are wire index sizes if you are drilling if you're installing this into a soft wood drill use a number 48 to pre-drill for the holes that's a wire size and use a slightly smaller 35 size if you're going into hardwood. If you have a metal application, be sure to indicate that so that they can provide machine screws. Otherwise, you're going to get the wood screws with this, as it states here. Priced and sold per hinge. When you buy one, we will ship you just one hinge, so be mindful of that. Some sauce hinges uh, come... Most are priced per hinge. Some come in a package of two, but that will be indicated um, so that you know what you're dealing with. So some basic dimensional uh, relationships here uh, for the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I dimensions. And that E dimension is here. I had mentioned that earlier. 
which is 5 32nd of an inch. This is coming off the template. So what we'll do is we'll go through these links. Let's just go through them from left to right. Hinge sizing chart. This document's called a nomograph, and it will tell you um, what hinge you can consider using. So the 208 tells us that the minimum door thickness is going to be one inch. Now you can use it on thicker doors, but it's really a matter of using the right size hinge based on the weight and then observing the minimum door thickness. So if you have a, you know, let's just say a 24 inch wide door that happens to be uh, 60 pounds, I suppose. That might be a pretty rough example here, but you would draw that line between these two dimensions and continue straight across. Um, you would intersect your two values is what I'm driving at. And you would get then go straight across. And you'll see that you're hitting basically <clears throat> almost every hinge that they make for a 24-inch, 60-pound door. And that 208 is over here. So in our sort of scenario, we'd probably be looking at three number 208s. So that would be a good option to use if you had a minimum thickness of one inch and you were thinking about using two hinges. Okay. Uh, pardon me, if you're thinking about using three hinges. If your door was lighter, you're probably going to fall down in this two hinge range that's here. A little bit heavier. But you can see how the nomograph increases in quantity of hinges as the door thickness increases that part number for the hinge changes but you'll see as you get you know a wider and heavier door you're going to fall up in this range that's how you use this nomograph i would recommend that you read this and then use it to select those hinges that are uh, that are qualified as a potential hinge for your application 90 degree hold open this is a document that just literally shows us what the hinge looks like when it's open at 90 degrees. It's just a handy dimension to have um, that will show you this X dimension, which um, I think is a nice resource document to have. Um, I, I don't know that it's going to bump into something that you're going to need to observe. Dimension X is the dimension from this point to either face on the sauce uh, hinged listed. So, you know, from this intersection of these two hinges here in either direction is 3 8 uh, pardon me, it's 11 64 for our 208 hinge. Cased jam detail is here. This is a document from the manufacturer that kind of gives you an idea of what this looks like in a typical installation. You can see that this door is only going to go to 90 degree uh, or thereabouts, maybe just slightly heavy on that. And this is a great example as to why you would want to consider overhead stops. You don't want to hyperextend this door because you're going to damage the door and the casing uh, most certainly. And they're taking this area right here and they're showing what that E-dimension will ultimately look like. Uh, that E-dimension, whatever it was, I forget. The E-dimension is 532nd of an inch, so just heavy on an eighth of an inch. You can't exceed that from where you install the hinge to that outside dimension. So just another handy reference document for you to review. Why there is not a stop drawn drawn here, I can't tell you. There ought to be a stop shown here. Uh, okay, let's look at the clearance detail. Now this document is, if you were to call the factory and say, hey, listen, you know, I want, you know, what's my door going to look like if I want to go to 90 degrees and I'm going to apply some trim? They're going to send you this document. So this has everything to do with the E dimension as well. Uh, in the sense that, you know, you're observing the E-dimension right here. But based on any sort of trim that you might apply, these are the different scenarios of what things are going to look like. And that E-dimension is so critical 
okay, that without anything applied, it brings you, because of how that vertical axis of pivoting moves, it brings you to within a 64th of an inch in this relationship here, so that if you were to violate the E dimension to make that greater, you can see how the door's not going to open because your door is going to hit the jam. Okay. Now you can substitute material like they're showing here for that E dimension, but the same rule applies. You can kind of cheat that a little bit, <clears throat> assuming that you're going to chamfer or bevel the outside edge. Or over here, you've got it applied on one side. But you can see these different scenarios are potentially, well, they're going to have the potential to limit your ultimate degree of opening. And they're also showing you up front, this is what it's going to look like, uh, depending on what you're doing. Okay. So I would definitely uh, be aware of this if you have an application that might get outside of the standard application. Now, the template. The template is... Uh, a quick drawing showing the um, important dimensional properties of the hinge. And it's also what we're going to use to discuss how to install it. So if you recall earlier, I said plate and then body. So when I prep for sauce hinges, I'm going to mortise my body prep first. And all of the dimensions that you need to, to determine what you're prepping are all here. Okay. So your body, your, your width is 5 eighths of an inch. That's how wide this is. So I'm going to first mark my top of the door to the center of each hinge and the underside of the header to the center of each hinge. And if you're moving between those two, between the door and frame, be sure to um, allow for that margin from the underside of the head to the top of the door, which would normally be an eighth of an inch. So if the top of the door to the, top, to the center of the first hinge is 7 inch, that same dimension from the underside of the header to the center of that first hinge needs to be 7 and an eighth, and so on. So now you're going to prep this. Okay, great. You need three dimensions. How wide is it? How tall is it? And how deep is it? And it's all here. So to do that body prep first, I like to do the deeper preps first. I want to have the finished prep the last thing that I do. I know that it's 5 eighths wide. I know it's going to measure here at 1 and 11 30 seconds of an inch. And then it's going to be 5 eighths thick right here. So I'm going to make that prep. 5 eighths wide. Uh, 5 eighths wide. It's going to be, well, this dimension is the same. 5 eighths wide. Oh, and then the height, 1 and 11 uh, 32nd of an inch. And then the depth, which is 29 30 seconds. So they're not giving us dimensions as to what to mortise. Well, they do here for the depth. So 15 16 yeah, I see that. 15 16 will be your mortise depth. The face you're just going to want to mortise that no larger than the, you know, five eighths of an inch. You're going to want that to be five eighths of an inch. And then the overall height, one and 11 30 seconds. Sure, I would add a sixteenth of an inch to that or something in that range. Not more than that, just so that it fits in properly. Then you're going to do your plate prep. Well, the plate prep is, again, five eighths, two and three quarter tall, and then nine thirty second thick or deep, I should say. Okay. I don't see a reference to radius here, knowing that this is a uh, 1 divided by 8 times 5. five sixteenths, right, 5 sixteenths radius. I don't see a 5 sixteenths radius here, which means... Um, I'm assuming that it is. I don't see why that would not be, um, you know, a 5 16 radius. It ought to be on here, though. And I don't see it called out. So the point is, is I'd be using a 5 eighths router bit. Then I would travel 2 and 3 quarter overall height. 
and I would do that at 932nd deep. And then I'd have a completely prepped door for a sauce hinge. It's that easy. Now, it is. It is literally that easy. Now, and we're going to talk about how to make it easier as well in a moment. Then we have hinge location. This is a document from the factory that is their published guidelines in terms of where they want you to locate hinges. Um, you know, when you're dealing with a lighter weight door, you know, I don't know um, that it's going to be the end of the world if you were to put three hinges on the door and put the third hinge in the middle. But the factory wants to see them biased towards the top, as you can see. And that's because the majority of work 70% in fact of the weight of the doors hung or borne by that top hinge. So they really want that top hinge to have as much assistance as practical uh, moving that hinge up here. If you're doing full size doors you might want to make sure with your wood door manufacturer that locating the hinges in these places will not violate their warranty because there is established uh, documentation that says for, ever, for a 60 inch, up to 60 inch tall door, you're going to use two hinges. Once you get past 60 inch, and for every 30 inch after that, add an extra hinge. And they're also having you space them equally. Well, not in the world of sauce. They want you to bias that towards the top. So if it was me, I'd be following these guidelines. But if I was doing full size doors, that have a warranty, I would get in writing from the door manufacturer that this would not violate their warranty. Now, there is a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page. When you pull that up, you'll be able to review not only all of the sauce products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the catalog. So I had said earlier talking about how to make it easier to install sauce hinges. I'm going to scroll down to the um, near the end of the catalog where I know the installation tools are. And I happen to, you know, I've been in this catalog so many times, it's near, the, it's near the end of the catalog. So Sauce has a router guide template system for doing Sauce hinges. You can buy um, a kit for prepping. The problem, though, is that they do not have a kit for the 208. They do, though, make individual templates for the 208, and that part number would be 208IT, and it's obviously going to look like this template that's here. So, um, yeah, I was hoping for a better photo of it. The bottom line is... to locate a better image. So here's the 208 IT. And basically what happens here is this. What this is, well, what this isn't showing are the nails that will hold this on. You'll take this, when you strike your center line, you'll nail it to the door and or the frame. These inserted roll pins are going to give you the proper E dimension. You have to just flush that to the pull side of the door or to the pull side face of the frame and it will position the template so that you don't violate the E dimension. A couple of, we've got a couple of nails that will keep it held down. A couple of roll pins to give you the proper lateral positioning and you've positioned it vertically. You'll then prep the body between these two inserted drywall screws literally is what they are. Um, then once you have that body prep done, you'll pull the screws out and then do your plate prep. Okay. So it's pretty easy. It's a nice, uh, template to have. And as you can see, it's not very expensive at all. Now, however, before you're going to do this sort of work, and when we slide back to the catalog, you um, now whether or not you buy the template or you make your own, you're going to need some sort of template guide. I would, you know, if you're doing this 
one time sort of thing, I'd probably buy the template. Um, if you're going to do it all the time, uh, you can consider making your own. There's nothing difficult about it at all. Um, it's just, you know, it's uh, the template's done. It's already been made for you. The engineering's been done. My only downside of these sauce templates is I don't believe that they're extremely robust. I've never used one of these over and over and over again. I don't know what it would really look like, you know, 50 doors down the road, um, being just made of poplar and nails holding it in. But the point is, is if you use this template, you're going to mandatorily have to use the proper bit. This 46259S uh, bit uh, and the proper router guide because the size inside of the template that's been actually prepped is based on the, the diameter of the router guide and the bit that you're sticking into it. I've had a customer call and say, um, the hinges are just too tight. You know, they're, I can get them in, but they're just, they're just too tight. And it turned out that the manufacturer sent the wrong diameter bit. Um, they sent a bit that was too small. Um, and um, long story short, as we're troubleshooting the problem over the telephone and having mortised for this material personally, uh, we were able to determine once the client, we got to the point in the troubleshooting process to put a caliper around the bit. Turns out, yep, it was the wrong diameter bit. And uh, once that was accomplished, then we were, then we knew exactly why that trouble was. It could have been the client using the wrong router guide, but he had ordered the template, the bit, and the router guide all from us. And because there wasn't more than one option of router guide, and there is more than one option of bit, it was more likely that, most likely, that the factory simply packaged the wrong diameter bit, which they did. And they made it good immediately, and the uh, problem was solved. So there you go. Now, the rest of this catalog is really handy because it will allow you to dive into the entire world of sauce hinges. And it had been said that I don't care how heavy the door is, keep throwing sauce hinges at it. These are some pretty uh, famous properties here. While it'd be great to visit this, and I plan on doing so someday, this is the one that I'd rather visit sooner. This is called Falling Water. That's Frank Lloyd Wright's crowning achievement of his career. This is um, his crowning achievement. Uh, there is a tremendous story about this. Uh, there's a documentary that I had seen on um, public television many, many years ago. And um, quickly, the story about Falling Water is this. Frank Lloyd Wright was notorious for putting clients off, not starting projects on time. Um, he was also notorious for being broke much of the time, so he really relied on you know, large commissions to come in, and then he was good, and then he was broke, and then he was good again, and then he was broke. Well, this particular client had been nagging him for several weeks and months, and he was in Taliesin at the time, which is in Wisconsin. His, his shop, his his home, his area where he had many, many um, protégés, apprentices, students. Client calls, lands in Milwaukee, client calls. Wright, he says, how are the plans looking? And Wright says, well, they're looking great. He's like, fine, I'll be there in four hours to pick them up. Frank Lloyd Wright hadn't started a single thing. As the story goes, he uh, took paper and asked for a box of pencils and sat down and for the following four hours drew continuously without stopping, without any revisions or changes, and drew falling water in one take. And as soon as the four hours was up and the client was being announced that he was there, Wright stood up as he's rolling the plans together and says, you know, something to the effect that, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. That kind of business. Um, but what's really remarkable about Falling Water is that it was a one-time done. And it's, you know, probably the most iconic 
private residence in the United States, with the exception, of course, of the White House and maybe Elvis's Graceland. Um, I th you know, I think you got one, two, and three right there. Anyway, um, obviously some other cool properties are here. We'll skip through that. Um, there is, as we're going to scroll up here, there are, they have their, um, you've got to get more than halfway through to start seeing hinges. They have fire rated versions and non-fire rated versions of self-closing hinges. Uh, so if you want your doors to self-close, they also have their Hercules hinge, which is a concealed hinge, but just has a outrageously greater weight capacity. The chart tops out at over a thousand pounds. So this is another nomograph for a much heavier hinge application. Now here's our standard hinges. Our 208 is here. And then our, our larger sizes are on the second page there. And you can go through and look at all the dimensional properties and see their requirements and whatnot. Uh, and as you continue to scroll through other variants, there's going to be fire rated hinge uh, hinges that are available. There's going to be power transfer hinges. If you're you know running some low voltage for whatever purpose, whether it be a request to exit switch or it be electric latch retraction or it be um, you know the type of glass in a door that will become opaque or transparent with the flip of a switch, basically. And then other variations on their hinges. They've got their barrel hinges that are here, small furniture application hinges. And then we're back to the kit that's here. Okay, And then the original nomograph. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like. And also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, before we go further, other finishes available on the Sauce 208. Okay, there's going to be a 24 karat gold plated. There's going to be a polished stainless, a satin stainless, an unlacquered or an unplated um, hinge. Unplated is what this is going to be. They have an unplated version as well, unfinished. Uh, a US 10BL, which will be a, a, a lacquered antique uh, oil rub bronze. A polished nickel, a satin nickel, a black, a polished chrome, satin chrome, polished brass. Satin brass, antique brass, white. They have all of those different finishes. Now, I'm partial to sauce, and it's because... Um, it's because I have taught myself how to machine for these. I have removed from the scenario or the conversation that I'm intimidated by the hinge. And I think a lot of people do not use it because, um, frankly, they're, they're intimidated by the hinge. They, it's way beyond their technical skill to prep for this. And I just say that that's wrong. If you can prep for a, for a butt hinge, you can prep for this. If you want to buy their template, great. If not, make your own. You just have to determine what size you're going to prep all of that. If you're going to, like I said, if you're going to do a couple of doors, buy their template. Maybe buy two in case you nick one. You don't want to remove the template. Pardon me, remove the router from the template while it's still spinning and then nick it. And, you know, that's done. You won't be using that template again. Um, other people have said, as I had mentioned earlier, oh, I can't adjust that. And I'm thinking in my head, if you just prep it, we're... You know, if you just make sure your dimensions are correct, you won't need the ability to cheat later on by moving that at all. There are not stories of doors no longer hanging correctly with sauce hinges uh, like you'll see on a butt hinge. Um, I'm also very suspect of these multi-adjustable concealed hinges with time. Your door position is determined by screws, by fasteners by how you tighten or loosen to move the door and I just don't think that long term it's going to be something that you're going to want to continue to have to uh, to adjust admittedly I've not heard of that being a problem but those types of hinges haven't been on the market for the number of decades the sauce hinge has um, so my, my opinion is jump in don't violate the E dimension okay that's it um, and then be mindful of the other things that I'd mentioned. Overhead stops have to be templated for it. And um, 
you know, be cognizant of what sort of maximum opening you want to have and make sure that you don't have trim or wainscot or some sort of deep inset that will prevent you from opening that too far. So, you know, um, I'm a fan. You know, the people over at Sauce are super nice, super easy to get along with. And for those reasons, I would suggest you use them. Any questions on the Sauce 208 in the US3 finish or any other Sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.